All right, welcome back to another kind of a different video. So just like I did with the 9700X, I wanna show how I got to six gigahertz with this 9600X. Now I've tried to set up my recording stuff a little bit differently, so I've reconfigured OBS. So I hope there won't be as many frame drops as there were in the original 9700X video. So I'll do, the, do it the same way like I did it in that video. I'll first show you the BIOS configuration, kind of show you all the important settings there. Then we go into the operating system. I show you what I do to try it to get the six gigahertz. Hopefully we get it. And then that will be the end of the video. So, uh, well, let's jump straight into the BIOS and get started then, right? So obviously the first thing I do is go back into my user profiles here and load the e-clock um, profile that I've used for Scatterbencher number 79. So that's the final overclocking strategy of that Scatterbencher guide. And I can just simply load this profile and we'll rely on almost the identical settings with here and there a little, little change. So one of the first things that we change is that I'm gonna set this to 106.5 to make sure that we can boost over six gigahertz, right? What will happen here is that our CPU's F max will be multiplied by 1.06, so 6.5% higher, and then we get to six gigahertz. Now, the next thing I want to do is um, go into the precision boost overdrive menu and set the um, CPU boost clock override instead of positive 200, we change it to negative 1000. And what will what that will do is it will lower the maximum allowed frequency to one gigahertz be, below the CPU's default, which is 5,450 megahertz. Now, the reason why I do this is because the 106.5 BCLK isn't stable if you want to just load into the operating system. So we need to do this to make sure that we get to the operating system. And then in the operating system, I'll just increase the Fmax again. Um, another thing that we need to do is to disable all of our curve shaper undervolts. This was important to use in our daily overclock, our daily OC configuration, but in the six gigahertz one, uh, we're not gonna be able to undervolt that much. So I'll just simply set all these back to, uh, to auto, which effectively disables the curve shaper. And then um, we're almost ready to go into the BIOS. So I think I just check this is everything that I need. And then we're gonna press F10 to go into the BIOS. Now I'm loading or, or I started the system with uh, the default settings. So essentially running the default memory as well. And because we're applying a memory preset with also loading the expo and increased memory frequency, it's gonna take a while for the system to train and get back uh, up and running. So normally this is the time where I go to the kitchen and make myself a cup of coffee. But in this case, I'll just speed up the video. All right, it looks like we're finally in the operating system and now it's time to set up all of the tools that we'll need to try and get six gigahertz. So the first thing that I'm going to open is hardware info. And the reason why I want to open hardware info is because it gives us a good information on the effective clock frequency. Um, so as you can see here, it's already open. There's an option here or there's a telemetry here that says effective clock. And there's also one that says core clock. Now, the difference between the core clock and the effective clock is that the core clock kind of measures what is what the CPU is configured to, whereas the effective clock measures the actual clock cycles. So you can see here that even though the, the core clocks are set to um, four gigahertz, actually the effective clocks are much lower than that. Um, and then we're going to open uh, a special tool here called Knob Bench. Um, not bench is available on my blog. You can you can find it there. Um, and I did get some questions in the previous video on like what's the meaning of uh, not bench or how does it relate to gaming workloads or other workloads. And the the short answer is it doesn't at all. 
the only purpose for using knob bench is that we can see how it's, uh, it, it will increase the effective clock. So we can see in hardware info here, for example, that you know while we're running our knob bench, the effective clock is 4.7 gigahertz. That's the only reason why I use knob bench. And in fact, um, it is designed to be very little load on the CPU. We don't want any stress test to actually impact the maximum frequency that we can get, right? So that's the only pur purpose for, uh, for knob bench. And then we'll also open up CPUZ XOC. Uh, oh, I already have two files here. I'll delete those. Um, and the difference between the XOC version of CPUZ and the regular version, you can find in the any file. So you can see here that XOC equals one. Normally it's zero. And the only difference really is that when you enable XOC mode, it doesn't uh, heavily load the CPU before taking the validation. So in XOC mode, CPUZ just captures the frequency and that's it no additional workload or anything like that. And so what we can do with the XLC mode is when we want to capture our frequency, uh, we just press F7 and then it will create this file um, that we can see here. And then this file is the one that we can upload to uh, the CPZ validation database. Um, that's almost it. So I'll leave this open here. Maybe I'll delete this here. And then the last software tool we have to open, I call it Shamino's work tool. It's essentially a tool that um, uh, Shamino, who, who works for ACES, uh, made to um, uh, at runtime overclock the CPU. Uh, and so one of the things that is included in this work tool is a certain amount of controls for the precision boost algorithm, right? So what we have, for example, here is that we can change the PPT, TDC, EDC, we can change the Fmax, we can also do curve optimization and so on. So. The first thing that uh, we'll do in our attempt to reach six gigahertz is obviously get back to our um, uh, high F max. So you can see in hardware info here that currently it's at 4,450 megahertz, which is one gigahertz below the default value of 5,450 megahertz. So in here, we can just type it in uh, 5,450, uh, press apply. And then we'll see that the frequency limit has increased and also our effective clock is now 5.8 gigahertz. So immediately the precision boost algorithm is boosting to a much higher frequency. And as per usual, we can actually use Fmax to, um, uh, to increase the, the maximum frequency further. Um, precision boost allows for an increase of uh, 200 megahertz. So when we set uh, 5,550, we're actually setting a plus 100 megahertz Fmax, Fmax boost override. We can see that it's applied in hardware info. And again, you know, our CPU frequency went up a little bit higher. So it's now already 5.9 gigahertz. And then we can you know, try again and set it to the highest possible value, 200 megahertz over the, the factory fused Fmax. Uh, we apply it. Uh, we can see here uh, it's applied here and we're already incredibly close to our uh, six gigahertz. So let's already maybe make a validation here. Ooh, I saw six gigahertz here very br briefly, uh, but it's not quite there. And then we can also set a minus five curve optimizer. We apply that. And now we can see our CPU is boosting over six gigahertz. So I make a validation file for that. Oh, it captured below it. Let's try it again. Oh, and it crashed, of course. So we'll try this process again on the next reboot and then see if we can get to six gigahertz again. All right, we're back in the operating system. So let's try this again. So we open up hardware info here. Then we open up knob bench. Uh, have to sit in the corner here. We open up X XLC so we can, or CPC, we can see that it didn't actually capture the six gigahertz, even though we tried to create the validation file. And then we'll put that up here, uh, leave the folder open, then open up our work tool. And let's try this again. So we go for the maximum F max, right? Which puts us a very close to six gigahertz, as we can see here. We'll start with maybe a minus one curve optimizer, which maybe is a little bit safer. Then we press F7. And yeah, we think we got a validation file, but the system froze up. So 
we'll reboot and see if our, if our validation was actually saved. All right, so we're back in the operating system and uh, let's see if our validation file actually actually saved, right? So uh, 6008, it has 30 kilobytes, so that looks good. Uh, now we can just try and uploading it to the validation website. So I'll go to valid.x86.fr. Uh, I wanna make sure that I'm logged in here and then we're going to select the file, 6008 megahertz open and then validate and there we go it says unchecked but we have our 9600x at over six gigahertz um there's some people who ask me like what's the true value of this like what's the point of getting these um high validations this is not stable for daily usage and yeah it's not the only purpose for this is it's fun you know just like how people solve sudokus that's also fun um so it, that's really the only thing to it um i believe i did have i did have some higher results with uh this 9600x or maybe not um maybe in a different folder i had uh, higher results but anyway so that's the uh, six gigahertz 9600x um and that's it i hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time